Hello everyone, in today's tutorial we are going to look at creating a V-Ray ambient occlusion material and uh, we'll look at a couple of different ways we can assign that material to our object and actually render out a turntable uh, with that object. So one way we'll use V-Ray render elements, the other way we will override the materials uh, and just have everything have that AO material on it. Uh, I'll also quickly show you guys how to take it into Photoshop and composite on there. Uh, using the multiply blending mode So to get started, this is my scene. This is just a clay pass um, So what this looks like after it's rendered is this so just a generic clay pass nice materials nice lighting So what I want to do is I want to bring out some of these crease details these occluded areas using an ambient occlusion pass and I want to multiply that on top of this pass so I can really start adding some contrast to my model bringing out those creases and self occluded areas Okay, so the first thing I need to do is I need to bring up my material editor. So that's M on the keyboard. And I will, I'm using V-Ray 3.6. This should work in V-Ray 4 or V-Ray Next. Um, so you just want to make sure you're actually in the V-Ray renderer. So I'll scroll up till I go to materials, V-Ray. And I'll grab this V-Ray light material. So what V-Ray light material is, it makes whatever material has this a light source, essentially flooding that object with whatever color this light material is. So by default, it's white. So it's going to flood our image with white if we were to assign this to everything. This is going to come in handy because what AO does is it really, it's going to assign black pixels or dark pixels to the areas of self-occlusion, creases, and whatnot. And so when we use the multiply node, those areas, those black areas, those darker pixels will actually multiply on top of our clay pass. Whereas the white pixels, they multiply, but white on top of gray, gray colors um, kind of negates. You don't see a change. So what we want to do is bring out those creases. Right now, this would flood everything as white. So let's scroll down into maps, V-Ray maps, and grab something called V-Ray Dirt. So you can't really see it right now, but what it's going to do is it's going to look at those areas of occlusion and assign these black pixels. So if we just double click this, you can see occluded color set to black, unoccluded is set to white. So basically, it's telling this light material, hey, occluded areas assign darker pixels, unoccluded air areas assign pure white or lighter pixels. Um, if you haven't used this material before, um, the V-Ray Dirt, a couple things you might want to play with, and they kind of depend on how, if you model your scene to scale or whatnot, but you might need to play with the fall off and distribution. So you might need to play with those to kind of get the effect you want. Ignore GI, make sure that's checked. Make sure the mode's set to ambient occlusion. I'm just going to leave everything default and you guys will see what happens. But first, I want to name this material. I'll call this one Matt AO. And let's actually name the V-Ray Dirt Matt. We'll call it uh, AO Map. <laughs> okay. So now what we could do is we could go through our whole scene and assign this material to everything. But let's say you have right now, this is a group, I believe. Yeah. So it's easy if I just assign this like normal, assign it to the backdrop. But uh, even easier way, um, I find, because this is just going to be a one off pass. So what I'm going to do is I'll bring up my V-Ray, uh, my render settings. And what I'll do is I'll go to the V-Ray tab. Global switches. And I'll actually override the material. What this is going to do is it's going to override every material in my scene with the material I assigned to this slot here. So let's just drag, oops, drag this material, plug it in to that override material as an instance. So any change we do here will, it, since it's an instance, it will update. So hit OK. Now we have that matte object. Um, so now if we hit render, it's flooding that. So what you could do is you could actually have this be your ambient occlusion pass. And if we wanted to set this up to be our, um, our turntable, um, 
because if this is still image you just save it right here right but if we need to save out multiple frames you could just go to the common tab um do your range i think my range is actually 200 let's do active time segment you can save the files uh let's create a new one call it um ao pass double click it call it ao underscore and a jpeg's fine for this demo and hit save okay so now when we render it should let me bring that up my other screen and it blasts through the AO pass. It should be blasting through pretty quick. I did set this to bucket in my V-Ray um, setup. I switched it from progressive to bucket. Sometimes progressive can be a bit slower for the AO pass. So let me navigate to that folder while it's kicking out. And we can see it's kicking out those frames, those AO frames. Okay. So I'm going to stop this. Another way we can use this is... Let's say we have our clay material, we haven't rendered it out yet, and we wanna get this ambient occlusion pass while we get our clay pass. Well, that's where V-Ray render elements come into play. And I'll show you guys how to do that. So let's close this. I am going to go back and turn off that override material. So you can simply just uncheck it. I'll clear it and uncheck it. So just a quick, so obviously it's gonna start overriding some stuff, but if I hit render, uh, this is what we'll start getting that clay pass so you can see how that can be handy to use that material override feature Okay, so another thing we can do to get that AO pass is basically V-Ray render elements. So to do that Go to render elements in your render setup tab and let's add a V-Ray render element and the one I'm going to do is called V-Ray Extra Texture. You can basically assign a material to this, and it's like an extra render. So a lot of these things actually are calculated at render time anyway. Ambient occlusion is technically not calculated at render time, I don't think. Um, but things like if you start breaking up your reflections, your refraction passes, those are calculated in real time anyway, or when you... Uh, render out your beauty pass so those won't add to render time adding a v-ray extra texture may add a little bit to your render time but it's going to be a lot more of a time saver than like rendering out your clay pass setting it up going in rendering out a separate pass for your clay material so this where this comes in handy so what i'll do is first i need to assign the texture map so extra texture doesn't allow you to plug in materials actually it allows you to plug in maps so all we really need is this dirt map anyway so it will do the same trick but you can't apply like a straight texture to an object directly that's why we need this v-ray light material kind of bridge that gap but when we're using extra texture we can just straight plug this v-ray um dirt map into the texture slot and again we want an instance okay so a couple things when you do this if we just kind of turn off our we'll set this to single and we'll turn off save file and we'll hit render what you notice is you get that original uh, clay pass because we added this as a render element so how do you get it from here is once this is done computer's lagging a little bit but you can see if i click in this upper corner here i have v-ray extra texture ao map if i click that you can see i have that pass now and i have my clay pass okay so i'm gonna try to stop it a little bit laggy there you go let's stop it so you can see i have my different channels alpha channel is another one obviously everything is set to one so but you can see that so here's the trick about this um if you are doing this method and you try to go to active time segment and save it out as normal it's not going to save out your ao pass and we can see that real quick provided this goes relatively fast i might just kill it and you guys have to take me on my word but i'll hit render it should be wait 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 stop that because i think i hit the wrong one so let's hit render so active time segment save file uh let's do render here so we'll just override it and i will bring that up 
So we might have to wait for this one to finish. But what you'll see, and I'll delete these real quick. What you'll actually see is this RGB color pass because it's a little bit of a disconnect. V-Ray frame buffer is kind of its own thing. And then the, co the, the common settings is a little bit disconnected from the V-Ray frame buffer. So once this finishes, you'll see, we won't see our ambient occlusion pass. We'll see, did I just close that? No, here it is. We'll actually see our, our uh, clay pass, even though we set it up in our render elements, right? This is going a little bit slow. So it's going slower than the clay pass because it's kind of calculating that AO pass in the background as well. Uh, I think this was taking about 30 seconds without the AO pass, but it's taking a little bit longer since we added it on there. Buckets, 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 and... Okay, so now we can see it just saved that straight uh, clay pass. So what we need to do, and let's stop this. We need to tell V-Ray, hey, we need to, we want you to save out all these channels separately. Okay. So in order to do that, let's go back here and let's just delete this one. And we'll close the frame buffer for now. What we need to do is say, hey, V-Ray, let's separate these channels out and save each channel separately. So what this will do is when we go through all 200 frames in this case, um, it will save out an RGB channel. So we'll have 200 frames that are the clay pass. Then we'll have 200 frames that are that alpha pass. And then we'll have 200 frames that are our extra texture AO pass, right? So I'm going to uncheck this because there's this disconnect. Um, so we don't really need the settings and the common parameter as far as like output saving. What we do need though, is we need to go to V-Ray, uh, frame buffer, and here we want to capture those render channels separately. So I'll uncheck save alpha cause we don't need it in this case, but we want clay, which is our RGB channel, right? And we could set it up so it saves it in separate folders. Um, but I'll just click here. Uh, I'm in that AO folder, so I'll just call this one AO. Or no, I should call it AUG, because that's the gun I modeled. So I'll call it AUG underscore. And then what it should do is it, for each channel, it'll say AUG underscore RGB for all the frames associated with that channel. And then AUG underscore extra texture um, for the, the frames associated with that AO channel. So I'll set this aug underscore and then save it. I'm in that AO pass, hit OK, and I'll hit render. Remember, I unchecked, I just went back to single and unchecked save in there, and I'm solely relying on the V-Ray frame buffer now to save out my separate channels. So if I hit render, this is going to take about 40 seconds, I think. But let's look at... this while it goes Ooh. okay and we can see the render oops render time there hope I didn't crash it no. Come on, buddy. There we go. <laughs> this is just lagging a bit. I'm trying to move too much stuff around. Okay, so here's our AO pass. And now what we should see is we should see a save for that RGB pass and a save for that extra extra texture pass. And remember, I unchecked alpha because that was an unnecessary channel. I didn't need it. So now what I need to do to get it to save in frames, because it just did one, I think you actually do need 
let's do common let's do active time segment you do need this one for it to kick to the next frame uh, but you don't need to save it out here because this is going to be redundant it's just going to be our rgb uh, pass so I don't really want to render it. Let's render it quickly um, just so we can I can make sure I'm telling you guys the right stuff. So if I go switch this to progressive, let's only give it like um, not one minute. Let's give it uh, 15 and I'm just doing this for the sake of making sure that so I'm only giving it like 0.15 minutes, which is about seven seconds. And then I'll monitor it in here. So this is gonna be noisy. See, so there it goes. So yeah, you do, okay, so that is connected. Um, the save feature is, is the where the disconnect happens, but for render setup, you're going to want to make sure you make uh, set to multiple frames. So let me stop this. Make sure you do set this to active time segment um, so it goes on to the next frame. But this is disconnected down here. So to save it, you just want to make sure you're relying on the V-Ray frame buffer, separate render channels, and that's how you set that up. So real quick, uh, let's hop into Photoshop. I have my clay pass and my AO pass. Okay, so AO pass is sitting on top nicely of my clay pass and the easiest way is to go to your blending modes, set the blending mode to multiply. And if we kind of zoom in a bit and just toggle this layer on and off, you can see how we're getting some nice contrast in those um, self occluded shadows. Um, and again, you can play with like the V-Ray dirt texture to kind of fine tune this to get the result you want. Um, but yeah, so for this model, I'd probably keep it at a hundred, but oftentimes I'll find I might dial the opacity down to like 75 or something. It just depends on how intense you want those self occluded shadows to be. Um, another cool thing we can start doing is like playing with this AO pass. So if I just put this in a group. And I will add a levels adjustment or curves. Hold Alt, select that so it's a clipping mask. So I'm holding Alt and just kind of hovering until I get the clipping mask icon. What we can do is you can start playing with like the curves and you can really start making those creases pop out or whatnot. And this is like works better if you kind of have a more feathered result for your AO mask, uh, pass. But I can do that. Um, then what I can do is add a filter layer. Again, hold Alt, add a clipping mask. And you can see those are the areas of occlusion. And I was playing with this curvature uh, adjustment layer to kind of get some cool results. So obviously this is too strong. Uh, maybe we dial it back a little. <laughs> this isn't my style. I'm just showing you guys what you can do with the AO pass. Um, so I'll just dial the opacity down. You can see how we're getting like this almost grunge feature in those areas of occlusion. Um, then what I can do, so that's that. And then I can bring that AO pass again on top, set it to multiply. And this one will act as more of my more traditional multiply uh, AO pass. So oops, commit. So yeah, so you can play with it. Typically when I do it, I'm just using the AL pass traditionally to kind of bring out those creases uh, in areas of self occlusion. But that's pretty much it. Hopefully you guys found this video helpful, pretty simple video. Um, but yeah, just wanted to share that with you guys, the two different ways you can go about kicking those out. Um, have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. Bye.